Do you want me to do like a mid-air pancake flip? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did you get that? No. What? <laughs> You'll never make it in Hollywood, boy. My name is Michael Fiorelli. I'm the chef at Love & Salt in Manhattan Beach, and today I'm going to show you how we make our homemade English muffins, otherwise known as Jesus in a Car. So what's going to go in the English muffins are dry active yeast, some salt, all-purpose flour, buttermilk, sugar, and room temperature butter. And the amount of love that I'm going to put into these muffins is immeasurable. Okay, we're going to get started now, and our first step is to add the dry active yeast. So it's two tablespoons plus one teaspoon right into the bowl. You're gonna, it's gonna work better if you add your hook attachment first. Then we're gonna add a quarter cup of warm water and you can take that right out of the faucet. Just until it's warm to the touch, you need the water to be warm so it's gonna dissolve the yeast. So go right into the mixer with that and turn it on at a low speed just to incorporate the yeast and water until the yeast is dissolved. That's not really working. Yeah. So the hook isn't touching the bottom of the bowl so it's not mixing the yeast and the water like I, like I planned. So I'm just mixing it up with a spoon a little bit, not a big deal. As soon as I add the buttermilk in there, which is the next step of the process, it's all gonna mix it right up together. It's gonna be fine. It's not a science. Just go ahead and add the buttermilk. So now we're gonna turn the mixer on, low to medium speed. One thing that's very important about the buttermilk, you don't want your buttermilk to be cold. It's gotta be uh, room temperature. So we mix that up just to incorporate it in the yeast is dissolved. Then we're ready to go ahead and add our dry ingredients. First of those being four cups of all-purpose flour. Very important when you put the flour in, start the mixer on low to incorporate the flour or else you're gonna have flour all over the place. We're gonna go ahead and add the rest of our dry ingredients, which is a quarter cup of sugar, right in there. And one tablespoon plus two teaspoons of kosher salt. You just wanna start mixing this until you start to see a ball form. The dough starts to form around the hook in a, in a tight ball and it starts to clean itself from the edges of the bowl. And that's when you know it starts, it's okay to start adding your butter. It's really important that your butter is at room temperature, okay? You don't want it to cool down the dough and it has to be soft so it's gonna incorporate fully in the dough. You gotta add them one at a time, okay? Or it's not gonna incorporate properly. You're gonna see them kind of melt right into the dough. The dough's gonna look really wet, that's okay. This is a wet, sticky dough. That's what's gonna make it light and fluffy in the end. The butter is, what, is the trick to that. I'm gonna turn this up to medium. I'm gonna let the dough go for about two more minutes until it fully forms around the hook. The dough looks good, it's nice and wet and sticky. I'm gonna feel the consistency of it just to make sure it's firm and it's all together. There's no big chunks of butter in it, um, which it feels good. So I'm gonna pull it out of the mixer onto my board. I'm gonna knead it for about 10 minutes the rest of the way. I'm just gonna dust my board lightly with flour, put the dough right on there. That's where a little bit of the work comes in. If you have to add a little bit more flour, that's okay, but you don't wanna add too much because you want the dough to be a little bit wet. Just enough so it doesn't stick to the board. That's what's gonna make these nice and light and fluffy in the end. Been kneading the dough for about 10 minutes. See, it's finally come together. You have a nice firm dough, but still elastic, springs back. Now I'm just gonna put it in a lightly oiled bowl. So just a little bit of oil, maybe a tablespoon. And you could just use a towel. And you just cover that with plastic wrap, let it sit on the counter for maybe an hour until it's doubled in size and you can go right into the refrigerator with it. So I've got a dough here that's been proofed and chilled and we're ready to go ahead and roll out some English muffins. I've got here, very important, some semolina flour. And semolina is gonna serve two purposes here. One, we're gonna put it on the board. It's gonna keep the dough from sticking to the board, but also it's gonna create that crunchy texture that we love so much on the outside of the English muffins. So I'm gonna just spread it liberally all over the board. And when I put my dough down, I'm gonna press the dough down so it really absorbs the semolina into the muffin. I'm gonna do the same thing right on top of the muffin dough. I'm gonna press the semolina into it, and then we're ready to roll them out. You want to roll these to about a quarter inch thick. It doesn't matter so much the size that you cut them, but it's the thickness that uh, is important here. They're all going to cook at the same time as long as the thickness is the same. If your dough gets a little big for your board, not a big deal. You just cut it in half or in pieces and just work in pieces like that. So rolling out to about a quarter inch, making sure I have plenty of semolina. The great thing about these muffins, depending on what you're using them for, sandwiches, bite-sized snacks, hors d'oeuvres, anything. You can cut them out to any size you like. Just turn your cutter. That. If you don't have a cutter, if you don't have, you know, fancy chef cutters like these, which you can buy pretty much at any culinary store or home goods store, you can use a uh, ramekin, a glass, um, even empty cans, your canned beans, tuna cans, things like that. Any, anything around the house that's round you can use. Just transferring them to a pan. 
You can transfer them to anything. We're gonna wind up frying them in these pans here. Now don't get rid of this dough here because what you can do is just knead it like this till it comes back into a ball. It's gonna feel really elastic because you're really overworking it right now. But if you just put it aside, okay, in 20 minutes, you can roll it out and recut it. Or you can save it for tomorrow or the next day and use it again. With these English muffins, because they have buttermilk in them, the longer they sit, two or three days, they're gonna pick up a little more tang to them, which is delicious. You actually want that out of an English muffin. So now that we've got our muffins cut, we're just gonna fry them up in a pan a little bit, just to get a nice little light golden brown on each side before we put them in the oven. We're using vegetable oil in the pan because if you use an olive oil or butter, it has a lower smoking point, it'll tend to burn. So I'm calling vegetable oil on this step. So you're gonna see these rise as soon as you get them in the pan. It's a lot of yeast in this dough and a lot of butter, both of which are gonna make these rise. They might get a little misshapen, that's okay. They're homemade English muffins. They're not the ones you get in the bag at the store. They're not all gonna be the same shape. You do wanna move quickly with these, okay? And keep checking the bottom. You can see that, that's the perfect color right there. The smell of these is really unbelievable. Like from the moment they hit the pan and when they come out of the oven, it's like people just crowd around them. We literally in the restaurant, when they come out of the oven, the first thing you do is look for, what can I stuff inside of these to make myself a sandwich? I really wanna eat these now. Now we're gonna take these into the oven. We have our oven set at 375 degrees here. It might depend a little bit on your oven at home, how quickly or slowly it cooks, but cook them for about 10 to 12 minutes, anywhere from 350 to 375 degrees. And now I'm gonna show you how we serve these delicious golden beauties. This is some of our cultured butter that we make in-house at Love and Salt. It's a delicious, beautiful, tangy butter. We use a little bit of a large flaky sea salt. And then we use rosemary, but we fry the rosemary so it makes it a little bit more palatable and uh, nice and flaky, so it just crumbles with the salt right on top of the butter. I'm gonna show you how we fry that up right now. Got the pan heating over medium heat. I wanna make sure the rosemary doesn't burn, but I do wanna get it nice and crispy. I'm just gonna pour a good level of uh, oil in there so I can kinda low fry it, cover the bottom of the pan. Just when it's shimmering, if you're not sure and you wanna test the oil, you can just take one little sprig and throw it in there. That's how you know it's ready to go. And you can smell it right away. And you take the whole stalk and throw it in. Just let it go, move it around in the oil. Once it starts to crisp up on one side, just give it a little flip. It smells so good. Turn that off. I've got the cultured butter here. I'm gonna sprinkle some large flake sea salt on there, and then I'm gonna to top it with the fried rosemary. Muffins have been in there for about 12 minutes now. Look like they're about ready to go. I'm gonna pull them out, open them up to test, but they should be uh, steamy and delicious. This is the test right here. So they're nice and golden brown on the outside. They're light, you don't want them to be dense. They feel light for their weight. Really hot on the outside, but they should be nice and steamy. Light and flaky and airy on the inside. That's what all that butter does. Perfect. Okay, now comes the best part. This is the way to eat an English muffin, by the way. Generous amount of butter on both sides. That is a perfect English muffin. That is Jesus in a carb. The sea salt, the rosemary, the cultured butter. It's a perfect combination. I can see why people get addicted to these. I might be addicted to these. Thanks for watching my how-to today. For the recipe for my English muffins, click on the bubble or keep eating bad English muffins. <laughs>